Hello everyone, and welcome to Beyond Thriving, where we take a deeper dive into our Thriver Thursday episodes. I'm Gabriel Kerr. And I'm Jade Anderson. Today, we focus on the unique and often challenging experiences faced by trans women of color who find themselves at a higher risk of violence and even death, more so than their white brothers and sisters. We're joined by Raquel Willis, activist and award-winning writer, Ian Field Stewart, performer and activist, Amara Jones, journalist and intersectional news producer. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for Thank having, you. having us. Ian, I want to start with you. What does it mean to be a black trans woman in America today? Ooh. Yeah, a little um, deep. <laughs> we're diving <laughs> right in. Um, I think that being a black trans woman in America is to um, be considered the voiceless even though you've been speaking the whole time and no one else has been listening. I think being a black trans woman in America is to be at the center and to be the blueprint of the struggle for freedom for black folks in this country and yet again to be ignored and misrepresented. Imagine living in a country where everything that's supposed to be there for you in any way, shape or form is not and is failing for you and then what that means um, for your life. And I think that that's a really important thing for people to understand. Now, Imara, why is there a stigma towards black trans women? An important thing about the stigma is that it is tied to um, gender roles. It has nothing to do with the things that people normally say, that somehow, you know, that, that we're freaks, people aren't attracted to us. All of those things are just not true. It's actually the opposite. Um, and it's those things that then compel um, and activate the stigma and the fear. When I think about cisgender people or people who are not trans, and their own insecurities that are not acknowledged. The men and the boys who are told they can't be emotional and intimate and not move through the world without trying to control and dominate other people, that is the problem. You know, it's also women and girls who are told that they can't be strong, capable leaders. So it's, it is a problem I think that we're all trying to figure out. Describe some of the brutality specifically black trans women face on a daily basis. We can all recount almost unspeakable um, acts of brutality that have been committed against trans women, specifically black trans women, from people being burned alive in their car to people being tied behind cars and dragged. I think that it's really important for us to understand that the brutality that those women faced is just the outcome of a brutal system that we have overall that then leads people to those extreme levels of marginalization. And there is a link between economic marginalization and violence um, in this country. That's the brutality, right? That's actually the brutality. It's not having access to health care, not having access to jobs. Um, right now, an education department which says that by law, trans kids cannot be protected in schools. Therefore, schools are a violent place, right? So the violence that we face in these acts is only the result of a lifetime of violence that is both from policy and institutions and then people. We have to figure out the balance of talking about what is hard and what is difficult and also talking about the beauty, the brilliance, and the power of being mm -hmm. black and trans. And we don't often have enough spaces to do that. What is your hope that the LGBT community on a whole can, can do? It's to right the wrong of 40 years ago. What I mean by that is that specifically white gay men deliberately decided to push black trans women out of the movement that they started five years after Stonewall. And that was a deliberate action. And you see that 45 years later, the disparity in that, right? Where there have been tremendous gains for white gay men. They are leading um, companies and are executives at companies, and there's a huge economic disparity. And they were the first to legally get rights before the Supreme Court, right? So I think that that fundamental wrong has to be righted in every way imaginable. For black trans, what resources are available that they can get help with right now? There are many organizations such as Black Trans Travel Fund for the girls, um, Black Trans Funds in the Arts. Um, they can also look to the OCHRA Project. Uh, we are a collective that is founded on the principle of hiring black trans chefs to go into the homes of black trans people and cook healthy, home-cooked, and culturally specific meals for them. Mm -hmm. They can also access our Tony McDade and Nina Pop mental health recovery funds, which set black trans people up with one-time 100% free mental health therapy sessions with black therapists. 
They can also seek our COVID-19 relief fund, which provides um, at minimum $80 and up to $3,000 for support with rent, utilities, medical bills, things like that, uh, groceries. How is the trans community affecting positive change? I think that's the vision that black trans people have, right? It is the way to reimagine our society so that it truly functions for all of our people and that it is freeing and liberating for everyone. Our, and so what's really important is that our vision is not a narrow one, it's an expansive one, it's a radical one. And it always has been from Marsha P. Johnson through now. And we, p black trans people are creating history right now. I mean, um, Ian and Raquel helped to organize uh, the Black Liberation March, which people call the Black Trans Rally, but um, March for Black Liberation. And it's the largest rally for trans people in the history of the United States, not even just black trans people. And how can family and friends help support that vision? Well, I think you have to support the black trans people in your life. So it is finding ways to, um, from a very young age, not enforcing gender roles in your family. That's a very intense request, especially for, for black people, but for many other people in the United States, um, is to, when you see your kids expressing any type of gender that, that varies from the idea of what you think their gender is, let that stand. And if another family member says something or tries to correct that, that you prevent that from happening. Um, it's also that you actively, again, reach out to black trans people in your life, your black trans family members, and include them and support them. I think also who I would have been if when I was six years old, people didn't put labels mm. on me that determined who I wanted to have sex with, mm. but rather were asking me who I was. I think that if, before I had had my first kiss, everyone was using like words that meant that I wanted to have sex with men. And I think that had someone asked me, who are you? Mm -hmm. What are you feeling? And, and said, what you feel is possible from an early age. I might have been able to step into a lot of things a lot earlier. It's almost as if families treat it as if like I'm losing something rather than I am learning something. Young people are the, mm -hmm. our future, and they, are, and they are also our present. And we don't need to wait for young people to grow into adults to start respecting their decisions and their autonomy. We have to start respecting them now. Thank you all for joining us today. If you have an experience that you'd like to share, please go to our comment section below. And for resources on where you can find support within the trans community, visit our resources tab on thriverthursday.com. Thank you for watching Beyond Thriving.